Your book is called The Gratitude Diaries, How a Year Looking on the Bright Side Transformed My Life. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I love talking about gratitude and letting yeah. people know how true this story really is. Well, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you. But your book is about much more than that, obviously. You, took a, you started a diary, a year-long project. What led you to embark on this year-long journey to, to sort of uncover and discover more gratitude in your life? You know, I had been the editor-in-chief of Parade, and I left there, and uh, as things sometimes fall in your lap, I, I did a big gratitude survey for the John Templeton Foundation. And so it started as an interesting project to find out how America feels about gratitude. And I became just fascinated by the subject, and people started talking to me about it, and I started realizing that maybe there really was something to this. So I thought, okay, let me try the next step and see what it would be like if I tried to myself take this on and spend a year living gratefully. So I have to tell you, it sort of started as a little bit of a literary device. You yeah. know, I'll do a year of gratitude. It was a project, or it was like a, you know. Right, and then a couple of months into it, I started discovering, wow, this is actually changing my life. This is actually very real, and I became very passionate and very excited about it and then thrilled to get to write the book and share it. Yeah, the book is great. I mean, I love diving in and seeing your journey because it makes me realize that I have some of these same issues. But what did you discover when you found that you were like, it was changing your life? What was it? What was missing that you found that you were finding as but, you You know, I, I, I had a good life. Uh, there was nothing wrong. There was no nothing terrible that led me to do this. But, um, well, let me give you an example. The first, it started in January. It started on a New Year's Eve when I thought, what's going to happen this year that's going to make me a year from now feel like this was a terrific year? What am I going to do that I'm going to look back and say, wasn't that the best year ever? And I realized that there probably wasn't a particular event that was going to make that happen. That no matter what happens in our lives, we usually find a reason to undermine it or, you know, it, it's not, winning the lottery wasn't going to do it. And from the research that I had done for that survey, I started to realize that it was how I looked at things and how I approached the year. And so that's what made me think, hmm, let me, let me try to do that. Let me, let me see what happens with that. So month number one, January, I decided to be grateful to my husband. Now, I've been married for a long time. Yeah, I have a great about that is husband. The number one thing. <laughs> right. Um, and so, what happened though with gratitude? It just makes you stop and appreciate somebody. It makes you stop and say thank you. Say thank you about the things that uh, he normally does anyway. And just the simple act of doing that changed the vibe in our relationship. Um, and you stop taking people for granted. You stop looking at somebody the way they always are and uh, as sort of background to your life and bring them to the foreground. And it was very, very exciting to do so that. So it's like a discipline that becomes a sort of revelatory element in your lives. Though. Right, right. Yeah, but you and actually first have to start by thinking about doing it, which is right. just a different way to go about it. Right. And you know, again, with, with a spouse or a partner or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever it may be, um, I then supported everything I was writing about with research and I spoke to any number of psychologists and marriage counselors and they told me that what was happening to me was actually very physiologically real. That if you express gratitude, the neural circuits in your brain that are for gratitude or for connection and love and appreciation get stronger. It's like any other muscle. If you yeah. lift weights, your arms are going to get stronger. Yeah, neural if you use the, If you use the neural circuits for connectedness and love and appreciation, you're going to feel them more. So it wasn't a surprise that at the end of the month, what started as an effort started to feel much more natural and real. Yeah, and you found there's like all sorts of health benefits, which I was really, I guess it's not surprising to think that if you're feeling grateful about things and there's gratitude, more gratitude in your life, it's naturally going to also get into the physiological, as you mentioned. But right. it says that you can keep the stress triggers too by just feeling and actually taking the time to feel grateful about things that you can help your body just feel better in generally. Right. Did you see that yourself? Well, very much so. And also in the last 10 years or so, gratitude has not been a subject that's ever been studied before. And only in about the last 10 years has it become something that universities and, and uh, psychologists and ex other experts have been looking at. And they have found um, that actually keeping a gratitude journal, writing a gratitude letter, um, has a serious effect on depression that there's one uh, psychiatrist at, who's done research at Mass General and he said that gratitude interventions are as effective as any other drugs that he uses for, for hospitalized depressive patients. Um, so that's really at one extreme. We're, we're, I, we're not necessarily talking about that, but that same kind of effect, it makes gratitude makes you sleep better. There have been findings that it lowers blood pressure, um, that it certainly uh, improves issues of stress. So yes, of course there's a 
physiological connection. There are mind-body connections. And when you change your mind, you change your body and, and vice versa. Yeah, well, I think that a lot of people who may be feeling grumpy right now are looking at the book thinking, yeah, that's <laughs> maybe time to change my ways. Um, when you were uh, going through this process, what did you think you were going to do with it when you were done? I mean, did you see that there might be a career or a way of life that you could around the idea of gratitude because there does seem to be a little bit of a movement happening on Facebook. I see all sorts of people posting all the time. Today I'm grateful for, right. I mean, what do you do with this now? Do you give speeches? Do you give talks? Where do you take your learning? Well, it, the, it is so much in the zeitgeist. I was just uh, uh, doing a signing here and, and uh, I was so excited by the number of people, first of all, who were in line and excited to get the book, but also who were telling me that they keep a gratitude journal or their husband keeps a gratitude journal. And so, uh, I've written a lot of books and I've never felt as passionately about one as I do about this one because I think it is so important and I think it's something so simple that people can actually do and people can find that it does change their lives and that it does make them feel better and that they don't have to sit around waiting for that great event in their life to occur but they can take whatever happens and and make themselves feel better about it that you can be in the midst of a bad situation and and you can flip it and you yeah. can say okay this is really irritating me right now. How can I reframe that? How can I think about that in a different way? How can I find the reason within that to be grateful? Yeah. And you know, there's a, there's a Benedictine monk who has used the expression that it's not happiness that makes us grateful, but it's gratitude that makes us happy. And, oh, I, and I like think that. that's a wonderful way to look at it. It's not that you need to sit around and wait for some of happiness to occur and then you can be grateful for that you start being grateful and then suddenly you're happier about everything that's occurring around you. It sounds easy enough. If you're like even remotely cynical like I can be sometimes uh -huh. to say just go be more grateful. Um, it's hard. You get to like actually take the time at first to like right. just kind of make it. It is a discipline at the very right. beginning. To actually and you know I'm, I'm not I'm not spiritual. I'm not naturally grateful. Um, and I think what people are responding to in the book is that it is very down to earth. It is for people like us who yeah. go like, no, this doesn't come naturally. And, and I'm not always looking on the bright side in my life. And it's just simple things. Every night, write down one good thing that happened during the day. Um, every day, take a picture. Take one gratitude picture. Find a reason to take a picture of something that makes you happy, that's something that you're grateful for. And just knowing that you're going to take that picture or that you're going to write one thing down at night makes you look at the day a little bit differently because you start walking down the street and you're thinking, hmm, maybe that's what I'm going to write about tonight. And it doesn't have to be a big effort. It doesn't have to be, you know, pages in a journal. Who can't write down one thing mm -hmm. that they're grateful for in a day? Yeah, did you stick with it for the full year? Was that, did you, did you like decide I was going to do it for a certain amount of time or has this now become part of your life every day? Well, you know, when, when New Year's Eve occurred, and the book was New Year's Eve to New Year's Eve, um, and as 12 o'clock was coming, I got really upset. My husband and I were alone that night, and I had wanted it to be, he knew it was going to be the last chapter of the book, yeah. and I actually started to cry about five minutes before midnight, and he said, oh no, what have I done wrong? This was supposed to be the perfect night to end the year, and I said, I don't want this year to end. It's been such a great year, and he did say, you could actually be grateful next year, too, if you want, <laughs> um, and uh, so, but, you you know, it was so wonderful for me to have a year where I was doing nothing else but thinking about gratitude and positivity. And you know, sure, I slip up. It's been six months since I finished the book, or five months. I slip up now and yeah. then, but um, like it is so much a part of my life. Eating, right. Yeah. But it's so much a part of my life now that I can catch myself. And um, you know, I can sort of tease myself out of a, a grouchy mood in a way that I probably couldn't before. Yeah, you said there's a zeitgeist. I feel it too. What are you seeing when you're on the floor here at PEA, for instance? You said you had some great interactions with people. There seems to be a hunger for people who just want to find something. This is probably ephemeral. It's probably always this way, but mm -hmm. like for who want to find something to sort of feel better and, right, and to help right. their lives feel right. better. Right, and I think people realize that um, that they're not necessarily going to find it outside. And you know, I have a section in the book about jobs and career and work, and that's one place where people are at least likely to be appreciated. In that early gratitude survey I did, I found people are least likely to say thank you at work. People want to be appreciated. People want to feel like that the work that they're doing matters, that the work you're doing, you're bringing words to people, you're bringing books to people, you're doing something that's important. And it's so important for all of us to be able to stop 
and not only appreciate others who work with us and say thank you, but appreciate ourselves sometimes and yeah. stop and say, because we're all ambitious and we're all looking to do the next thing, but to be able to stop and say, hey, what I did isn't bad. Um, and that was something I had to learn too. And in the months that I did on career and work, that was kind of important for me to be able to stop and say, there's, it's, it's okay to be grateful for where you are. It doesn't mean you're not ambitious for the next step but it's okay to, to stop and appreciate where you are right now. And what did you find when you're giving this vibe out into the world? What did you find coming back to you from others? There ha I mean, it's not just a one-way street, obviously. When you are grateful to someone else and you are thankful for something and you express that, there's got to be something that also comes back that feels just as good to you. Great question, and it's absolutely right. I mean, gratitude is about reciprocity. If you're grateful to somebody, they're not only grateful back to you, there's been all sorts of studies about how they pass it on. So it really is a very much of a pass along uh, uh, subject, and it happens with kids too. There's been some great research showing that um, kids who were taught to be grateful are nicer to the next person. Maybe they're nicer to the next person. Right. And maybe, you know, in some utopian world, we can see some great circle of positivity being created that way. Well, I love these movements that happen around your books. We talked earlier about Pay It Forward. We just had an author on earlier, RJ Palacio, whose book Wonder is all about choosing kind. I'm all about being Great. more, putting more gratitude into my life. I hope this one becomes the same sort of movement and I appreciate all the work you've done to help oh. move that along. Well, thank you and thank you for helping me spread yeah. the word about it. I well, appreciate it. Well, it's great it. to meet you, Janice. Thanks, yeah, so, thanks much. so much for you being too. here. Really Take appreciate care. it. Thank you. Thank you.